Hi, I'm Sugar from Sugar Coat It and welcome back to How to Blog Like. This week we're checking out Kelly B from And I Get Dressed. And that was my best newsreader voice. We got a summer all, a kind of movie love, all in for some more of anything that comes along. So in today's episode, we're looking at Kelly Brown of And I Get Dressed. The thing that stands out about Kelly's blog and all of her social media platforms is that content matters. So the imagery matters, the design matters, time that you put into crafting a post and editing it, all of that matters. Whether you're starting a new plus size fashion and lifestyle blog or you're trying to take the one that you have to the next level, this is a blog that you can look to for ways to create content that is just show-stopping. So with that in mind, let's check out the blog. As you can see, we've got the full screen and the blog fills the whole page. There's no issue there with that. All the images size to it beautifully. It's just a super good looking page. Let me just, I'll show you, I'll take it off full screen for a moment. And let's just look at it. That, my friends, is a fully responsive blog. Okay. So why do I love it so much? Firstly, I adore that this header logo, it stays the same all the time and this image changes. I love that. But what I love more than that are these little tabs here. So all of these, you can click on them to view different categories of the blog. For me, that's a winner because I want to be able to go straight to the fashion post. I love that all of that option is right there, front and center, as soon as I arrive at this blog. It's the best. Like, you can't argue with that. And if your blog doesn't have some version of this, whether it be at the top or in a sidebar, or even if it's just a list of categories in the sidebar and not images, though I prefer images, then do it immediately. Stop what you're doing and go and do that right now because it'll make a huge difference to the user experience of your blog. Okay, scrolling down, as you can see, we've got a grid layout here, which I love a good grid layout. For me, I always prefer that they like line up, <laughs> which you can't always do, right? It's not always possible. Okay, right down here, we can see we can click through to older posts or we can actually, these are shopping links and they're connected to an affiliate account. I think as bloggers, we really need to get behind ourselves and each other and really support the use of affiliate links and all of that kind of thing that can help pay for a blog can help fund a blog in so many different ways. Scrolling down from here to the very bottom of the front page, we've got a latest video link. Now this is just to her YouTube channel, as seen in, which I think is wonderful. So that's there. Um, it also, it provides that social proof, right? It tells someone coming to her blog, these people like me too, or these people value my opinion on fashion, and you should too. Um, and then the social links are down here. I would love to see them at the top banner, but I'm guessing this looks like a really similar theme that I use on my blog and I haven't figured out yet how to put them up there or all of the ones that I need. I can add about four, that's about it. So I can understand that's probably what's happened there is that she can't actually add it there because it's a pain in the butt. Okay, we'll move through to Instagram now. She has a personal Instagram, which is obviously very related to the content on the blog. Um, it promotes the blog, all that sort of thing. Um, but she also has a community page called And I Get Dressed, where people can use a hashtag and be featured. I just think that's great because as someone who thinks that the community around a blog is really important, having a an opportunity for people to participate in this way. It's just really unique and really cool. You can emulate that for your blog, just using a hashtag that you invite other people to participate on. You don't have to go to this kind of effort, but the fact that she's gone to this kind of effort, I kind of love that too. Now, in terms of the actual Instagram, you'll notice that it's just killer image. 
after killer image after killer image. So there are similar edits here. So the lights, it's always crisp and quite clear. Even the ones that, that are obviously taken on a phone have a similar sort of look to them so that they fit in with the feed. Instagram loves consistency and sometimes that's a look of an image. So for Kelly, she pretty much features in all of her images, which I'll talk about in a moment. But that's the way that she ties her theme or her feed together. A, she uses great images. B, she uses a light, clear image 90% of the time. They're not overly filtered and you're not going to get any sort of filtered effect to them. They're just really beautifully edited and they're in those same sort of color tones, if that makes sense. And then C. Being able to utilize the content that you're creating for your blog and the behind the scenes that you may not be able to incorporate in your three to five images on a blog post, being able to bring them to Instagram and like crush your Instagram game is so important. And Kelly does that beautifully. Now, I was talking about how Kelly features in the majority of her images. Some people will be like, oh, it's too many photos of me. People don't want to look at that. But if you have a plus size fashion and lifestyle blog, people want to see you in the pictures. You need to be there because people are looking to you, not just for what to buy, but how to style the items they already have. They want new ideas and inspiration for the items that they've already got in their wardrobe. So if that means that you're in every single photo, then so be it. They don't care. And the successful accounts and the accounts that are consistently growing in this genre, they just feature the person really heavily. Okay, now heading on over to Twitter. Twitter is about conversations and that's something that Kelly does quite well. So she's having conversations, she's participating in conversations, she's sharing links to her blog and YouTube channels. I keep going to say YouTube, YouTube channels. The thing that you need to keep in mind with Twitter is that on Facebook and on Instagram, you're looking at one to three posts a day as a maximum. But on Twitter, you can get away with upwards of 20 updates a day. So you can be in a conversation that goes back and forwards and back and forwards. Then you can be sharing a link to YouTube. Two hours later, you might share a link to a different YouTube video. Four hours later, you might be sharing a link to a blog post. And another four hours after that, you might be sharing a link to an old blog post. And Twitter gives you that opportunity to A, be in conversation with not only your readers, but your peers and all that sort of stuff there. But you can be constantly promoting your other platforms. And you don't have to worry about people thinking, oh my God, I've seen you 50 freaking times today. Because you know what? If I'm in a conversation on Twitter, there might be 50 at replies. And people are just like, nah, that's Twitter. Here we are on Facebook. And I just need to say straight away that I love the minimalist look of this cover image and the beautiful um, white background, white crop image. I just think that's so gorgeous. Love it. Love it every day of the week. The biggest thing here on Facebook, if we're taking a lesson away from Kelly's platform here, is that she is um, sharing a decent amount of content. There's consistency there. She's posting quite regularly. But at the same time, when we scroll through here, we can really start to see that the posts are dedicated to sending you to the blog or sending you out to shop or sending you to YouTube or to other outgoing things. If you're constantly just feeding outgoing links, you're not having a conversation in Facebook and you're not keeping people on Facebook, your engagement scores start to drop. The lesson we can learn here is that, in my opinion, it doesn't look like that this is a focus for Kelly. So being someone who follows her blog, I can tell that Instagram and YouTube are where she's focusing her social media efforts right now. That's not a bad thing. It's a use of time and it's a smart use of time to pick your platforms and focus on them, develop those platforms and do what you need to do to show up there and no more. Too often we're trying to be everything to everyone. That for me is the big takeaway from Kelly's Facebook page. 
Now, last but certainly not least is the And I Get Dressed YouTube channel. From what I can tell here, it definitely is something that is building in momentum for Kelly. We've got a lot of videos starting to come through. There's a reasonable amount of consistency here with the videos and the amount of videos being posted. They're posting about a video or two a week. But the thing I love about this is it's got a good mix of content. What seems to do really well on this platform is a good variety of content. Posting regularly and realistically posting as often as you can maintain. So if you had a regular posting schedule of one or two videos a week, that would be great. What YouTube doesn't take very kindly to is if you post a video and then three months later you post another one and then you might post one four days later and then it might be another three months until you post again. If like Kelly, you've decided, okay, I'm gonna blog, I'm gonna have Instagram, I'm gonna have Twitter, I'm gonna have Facebook and I'm gonna have YouTube. You need to commit to a schedule that you can maintain. So for me, because I'm looking to grow my channel, I'm committing to one video a week. I'm going to make that one video every week and really start to develop and learn what I'm doing here. You need to get in the practice of doing these things. Say, okay, I'm going to do one post a week or three posts a week or one post a month, which let's face it, you need to be okay with the fact that it's going to grow slowly if you're only showing up there once a month. And you start to build out from there. How to blog like Kelly B? First of all, you're going to want to make sure that the content that you're producing is of a high quality every single time. Next, you're going to pick a few key channels and show up there consistently. So week in, week out, you're going to be there and you're going to be bringing that quality content. Next up, and something that Kelly does really well, is she collaborates with fellow bloggers and friends to produce more content more interesting content, and to really give everyone a chance to cross-promote their blogs. So if you haven't met anyone blogging yet, now's the time to see if you can make some friends. If you're blogging like Kelly, the short version is you're not going to be able to compromise on style. And when it all comes down to it, the final tip that I have from Kelly's blogs and social media channel is to schedule where you need to. It's impossible for a blogger to manage all of the things that we have to manage, especially if you're working full time or you have a family. So don't be afraid to pick those channels that you're not necessarily going to be engaging in, like Kelly does with Facebook, and schedule the posts. Sure, they may not get the same level of engagement that you would have if you were there and interacting, but they'll get more engagement than nothing. Okay team, thanks for being here. I hope you enjoyed this episode of How to Vlog Like. If you did, make sure you leave me a comment or like the video so I know someone was watching.